Good morning, boys and girls of the internet. How's everybody doing? I hope you're ready to join me on a new adventure. So behind me is a Subaru that I got for free. And one of the first things I had to do was get a key made for it because I lost the key. It had been here that long and if you can see in the back, there's already some parts taken off. So if that's not an indicator, of what we're getting into, I don't know what is. But before we do anything, we need to get it out of the grass and down here in front of the shop so that we can assess what we've got going on and maybe wash it up a little bit. So we've got a flat. Oh yeah, on the rim, baby. Let's pump some tires up. And through the power of magic and editing, it's moved. Was my buddy Jack. Jack come by. He had a little portable compressor because I didn't have a hose that would reach all the way across the parking lot. And my air tanks at the house. First thing I'm going to do is give this thing a heck of a bath to knock out any wasp or no shoulders or other things that might be living inside it. And under the hood, we have what's left. <laughs> and I say what's left of a uh, 2.5. So there's a company out of Charlotte, North Carolina here that we're going to get an engine from that is imported from Japan. Uh, and it's going to go from a 2.5 to a 2 liter. So you are going down in displacement a little bit. Um, but the motors have like 60,000 miles on them. So that's what we're going to do. I installed one of those a few years back in a, uh, I think it was also an Outback for a customer. And man, that thing just, it ran out great. So that's what we're going to do for this one. So I'm the proud new owner of a Subaru Outback. So I cleaned off the cow panel found an assortment of bolts and some brackets and uh, now it's time to pressure wash it. I got peppered as well all over the place. I hit a little pocket in there that had a bunch of gunk and uh, I'm wearing most of it now. But I didn't do the back or anything. I was more focused on just the gunk up here and all the stuff and all the crevices. So here we go. <clears throat> all washed up, everything's cleaned out. I'm gonna prime the fuel lines and stuff to blow all the water that may have gotten in those out. I did plug the exhaust. I didn't wanna fill the converters and stuff up with uh, water. Good way to rust the exhaust out quick. Speaking of rust, this car has virtually none. It's it's solid. So definitely worth putting an engine in besides uh, the grimy interior. Getting ahead of myself on the inside. Bagged up all the trash. And I collected all the car parts and moved them back here. So the intake manifold, extra valve covers, the new engine will come with those. Belt tensioners that are frozen in place. So we will be putting new belt tensioners on there. Alternator, air box, radiator, loud ass Duramax for no reason. Uh, AC compressor, oil filler tube, and the two radiator fans. Now, be careful setting stuff on the radiator. This one fan is broken. The other one looks okay. We'll test them to make sure they work, and then I'll just order a replacement for whichever one that is. Also has subwoofers under the front seats. How cool is that? I don't know if that's factory or not but it's, it's like mounted in there, so maybe it's factory. I'm gonna start vacuuming up all this mess now that we can see the seat. Okay, I started vacuuming stuff out and I'm giving up for the day. I got everything done except for the hatch and the passenger floorboard, which you will see tomorrow. I'm calling it a day. I haven't ate lunch. It's like 98 degrees outside with a billion percent humidity. I'm wet to the touch. I'm going home. We will catch you guys tomorrow. Welcome back. It's a whole nother freaking day. And I don't know if, if this Besides is connected. To, this... I guess it was not connected to Bluetooth. Uh, it's not near as hot today. Let's see, 79 degrees. Feels pretty good. I don't feel that great. Probably from cleaning in that <laughs> nasty Subaru. Uh, so we're gonna try to remedy the inside some more today. We just left the old Dollar General and we have lots of Clorox products carpet stain fighter stuff i mean you name it i bought it hold on 
That was a cop. <laughs> but yeah, you name it, I bought it. We're gonna try to see if we can make this thing smell like uh, fresh linen. And here's what I was talking about. So I gave up vacuuming yesterday after the driver's side and most of the back. This is the mess we're left with and some of the slight mold that's growing. I've cleaned worse, okay? I've done worse. But this is, uh, and this one doesn't even have like a horrendous smell. It just smells like car that's been sitting for a long time. And so we can, we can do something with this. We can make this not as gross. And the initial wipe down is done and I sprayed the carpet powder stuff everywhere. Uh, I mean like everywhere. It's in the seats, it's in all the little nooks and crannies. That stuff's never coming back out. But it's an odor neutralizer too and I will say it's getting the smell out. I mean you can, you can put your head in it now and take a whiff. But I wiped down the door panels all of it with mold mildew cleaner once again more carpet or uh, more powder stuff whatever that crap is all in the back moving on to the update car is in the shop now we're gonna rip this engine out i'll show you the interior now that it's all halfway clean getting there more importantly i know you don't have smell vision but it smells much nicer inside I just noticed, however, a lot of my bell housing bolts are already gone. That is not what I was hoping to see. So I need to go through that big pile of bolts and see if some of them are in there. Got a free half inch socket though. So let's get this out. Motor's out, Wasn't too terribly bad. So correct me if I'm wrong, this is how I've done Subaru engines in the past. Uh, floor jack block of wood go underneath it as far forward on the pan as you can get and then I'll jack the motor and the transmission up together to get the uh, engine mounts the stud part to come out of the frame and then once it lifts then I slide the engine forward and off because it's got these guides these like what's well, it's an engine stud but it, that'll keep it balanced along with the guide pins in the transmission uh, so that's how I normally do it. Do it like that, jack it up, slide it off. It's really hot. I am extremely tired. I am ready to go home now. So I'm gonna call the uh, import company again in the, I guess in the morning since it's already after five today. And just like that, we're back. All right, so we're on the highway, uh, headed over here to pick up my new JDM uh, EJ 2.0. The uh, import company or whatever has got it ready for me. So I'm scooping over here real quick to grab it. Let's see what it looks like. Got it loaded all up. Cool place in there. And now the only thing, I did stop put some gas in the truck because she was binging at me. Uh, but now, let's, uh, let's find a McDonald's or something. Get us a burger. So I could, uh, I could eat. It is lunchtime. So. Unloaded, back at the shop. We can take a look at our new EJ20. There it is. So we're gonna pull that timing cover, inspect the belt, intake's off, the harness is off, it comes with the intake, uh, EGR port, the exhaust is off, it's sitting on a stand, or a roller. Over here on the floor, we've got my original intake from the car i washed it up with some uh, aluminum acid made it look all nice and pretty now it matches the intake that came with the jdm engine although it is a little bit different since it doesn't have all the extra stuff that the japanese version did it looks like i'm going to be able to use all the front drive accessories which is nice because uh, my ac compressor is locked up on the old one and this one turns nice and free but uh, the plug-in looks the same for the clutch. The lines look like they're in the same orientation. Power steering pump looks the same. All the, so all that stuff looks the same. So I think I can leave all that. Uh, tomorrow we'll pop the front cover off, swap the cam gear, probably throw a timing kit in it just because I'm already there. I don't want to have to do it in the future. I'm also going to get some new intake gaskets because you can see these have big impressions in them. 
and they kind of bent. They're like a metal mesh material and they bent as the intake was coming off. So I'm gonna replace those, the timing belt, and then we'll stab her into the car. And we just left the O'Reilly's. It's another day we're out of gas again because this bitch is thirsty. But on the other hand, we now have our timing kit and our uh, intake manifold gaskets. On the Subaru single overhead cam engines, the socks, uh, what you got going on for timing marks. So the balancer I've already removed. They Subaru balancers always come off so easily. You take the nut off and they just fall right off. You got a paint mark here on the crankshaft and it lines up with that mark right there if you can see it on the side of the crank position sensor. It's, if you run your finger across it, you feel a little indention right there. So that's where those two guys like to line up and you can even see the line on the back that also points to right there. On the driver's side cam, you've got an arrow. Don't, don't look at the arrow. The arrow will mess you up. So you need to look for, over here on the cam gear, is that little mark. Right there. That little mark lines up with this notch on the driver's side cam cover. Now on the passenger side, you got a solid gear with a line in it. You can feel it with your thumbnail. That line matches up with this split right here in the head. And uh, I don't know if there's supposed to be an indent or something there, and it's just gone. I don't know. But that's where that lines up. You line up that split with that, the crank to that line, and the passenger driver side cam to that notch. And that is top dead center, in time, ready to rock and roll. On the replacement timing belt, if you get a decent one. So this kit is by Import Direct, and the belt is manufactured by Gates. That's what you want. If you look on this belt here, you've got a line here, a line in the middle, and a line right here. These lines go on the cam gear. You're gonna align this mark here directly over that, like so. And then the same is gonna happen for the perforated line. I know it looks solid. That's supposed to be like a perforated line. That's gonna line up right there on that guy, like that, okay? And then your final mark is gonna be like that over that guy. That's, that's how these kits work. That's what lines it up in time. So let's uh, swap this out. Rode the struggle bus on that one, folks, but it's all back on there. Only thing left to do, pull the pin. This thing's on there. It's kind of tight, if I'm honest. That's the kit, though. But she's a little tight. Old engine is in a container. I took the pan and the flywheel and all that stuff off back, uh, or the pressure number. God darn. Flex plate, took all that off and uh, spilled some oil, mint. Got our motor mounts that we need for the new engine because they're different. So I wasted about an hour and a half because I looked at the pans and I noticed this pan was significantly smaller than the US pan that came on the factory engine. So I took them off, I cleaned that one up, I cleaned it out, I put fresh RTV on it that I had to go get because I was out of gasket maker and I went to put it on and it wouldn't fit and I thought it was the pickup tube. So I swapped pickup tubes and then I tried to put it on and it didn't fit. Turns out where the pump, where the pickup bolts into the pan is different. Different enough that the pans won't swap. So anyway, here we are now with the pan on the original pan, back in there, new gasket, and uh, motor mounts are swapped. Dad's jacking up the trans and we're getting ready to stab this thing in there, finally. As far as we're getting for the moment, motor is in the car. I've got all our bell housing bolts put in, uh, except for the two main nuts that are on the studs underneath. Uh, but all the other ones are in. Torque converter bolts right there. 
all of those are in and torqued down uh, and the motor mounts are in there the, or the studs on the mounts are through the frame so i just got a bolt put the nuts on those too and uh, and she is in the car i've got to go to the junkyard in the morning because as you know the engine was halfway tore out of this car when i got it and we're missing starter bolts and stuff unfortunately which sucks but uh, the starter uses a nut on a stud and then an actual bolt for the other one and i don't have either of those so i got to go get those plus one of my plastic cooling fans is broken for the front so maybe i can get one of those while i'm there i don't know we'll see but anyway it's in the car it's uh not going anywhere and i am beat and we just had a hell of a storm roll through everything's flooding out so it's a good time to let the shop dry and uh and go home start over tomorrow all right at the salvage yard now we're gonna grab some bolts since i'm missing some there's the subaru but check out the lumina apv how cool is that and then uh cutlass sierra up on the bench looks like she's about to get processed this morning sucks to suck Ooh, this one's a sedan and it's got a cal induction hood on it this is factory this is an aftermarket this is a factory hood it just surprises so they got an aftermarket grill in it though all right oh and she's got a whole engine oh and a hood prop i gotta get a hood prop missing all that stuff too but more importantly starter bolts and it looks like the damn starters out of it <sighs> all right so we got a hood prop because i completely forgot about not having one of those i also got the upper radiator mountain brackets the bolts for that and the starter bolts that i was missing all of which came off of a uh, subaru cross track believe it or not except for the radiator bracket um those were off of that Outback sedan that you saw. But yeah, they had like a 2020 Outback or a Cross Trek in there, and everything's the same on Subarus. So I grabbed it and I'm running with it. It cost me $5 for anybody interested for the hood prop, the radiator support brackets, and the pocket full of bolts that I got. Uh, that included my entry fee for the salvage yard, which they didn't actually charge me for. But I would have paid extra to not have to deal with people like that when I went to leave. Oh my God. Uh, there was someone at the checkout counter. It was three people, like a 55 year old man wearing cheetah print spandex, like straight up women's leggings is what this man was wearing. Okay. And then you had like Harley Quinn's cracked out cousin, Methany, with the double pigtails. And they were, they were dyed. It was like green and purple and it looks uh, i don't even know how to explain it but uh the smell behind them was like <laughs> wet dog on fire in a landfill like i'm pretty sure like if essence of roach was a smell that would be them uh and i don't miss that you know i i was in the junkyard for many years and i dealt with all kinds of people from all walks of life but being out of that industry for three, four years now, wow, I you forget about a lot of bad things that just you dealt with and just had to. Jesus, I I had mm, it. It brought back like lists in my brain of clientele that were just <laughs> wolf. No. It some, some some characters out there is all I'm gonna say. Let's go put all these parts on. With our bolts from the junkyard, starters in, bolted down, exhaust bolted on, uh, all our front drive accessories are on. Swapped to the U.S. style power steering pump because my lines were in the wrong spot. Intake manifold is bolted on. Coils are hooked up. Injectors are hooked up. All that good stuff. Um, I went to put a battery in it and prime the system. I had no fuel flow. So it looks like our pump has decided to not populate any longer. 
which the car's been sitting. It's one of those things you're gambling with. So over here, we got the seat out. Just rolled the carpet up. Look, coffee beans and a cigarette butt. Anyway, this is the access, or wait, no, that one. That one's the access for the fuel pump, one of these two. And uh, let's get it off and see, uh, see what it looks like underneath there. See if we can find one. You don't even realize it, but it's been like almost a week now and the Scoobaroo is sitting here where it's just been sitting. So, fuel pump was dead in the water. Uh, the local parts stores wanted like both of my arms and a testicle for a new fuel pump. It was ridiculous, like 400 bucks. Can't do that on a free car that we've spent more on the engine than the cost of the car itself. So what I did was I jumped on the internet and I ordered another one of those favorite pumps that everybody seems to hate because they're cheap and they're from China. And they wrapped it completely in a black package like I ordered something naughty. So let's open it up, make sure it's not something else. Nah, electric fuel pump. Yeah, see, I don't know why they had to wrap it all secretive. It's a, uh, it's a premium. And there it is, our stubby little pump. It's actually uh, zip tied to the packaging, so. But that looks, uh, looks about like it. Let's get ours out drain the tank and see if we can get the new one. We got a fluid extractor in here, pumping this crap out of the tank, which is nasty looking. And then our old pump over here on the ground, just freaking, yeah. So we'll get it, uh, get it all drained out, inspect the inside of the tank and uh, move on. Get the new one in, some fresh fuel, see what happens. The tank doesn't look great. I did wipe it out best I could, slosh some fuel around in it, scrub it some more, hit it with the air vacuum, and try to get as much of it out as I can. But I have a warranty on this engine, and I really need to hear this thing run. So there's inline fuel filters for a reason, and that is the cheapest pump you can get on Amazon. But against my better judgment, we're gonna throw the pump in here with some fuel and see if we can just get this thing to run. And if it does run, uh, we're gonna leave it at that for now until I can afford a gas tank and I'll just get a used tank and put in it. I know it's not the right thing to do. We're kind of on a time crunch here and I got other projects that I'd like to get started on. I just need this Outback to run. And uh, there's, like I said, there's fuel filters in it for a reason. They're just gonna have to try to catch it. That's the cheapest pump you can get on Amazon. If it burns up in three months, I'll put another $70 pump in it. So in the meantime, unless someone out there has a, uh, a clean fuel tank, for a five to nine outback and they just want to hook me up with one you know not gonna turn one down uh otherwise we're throwing the pump in this and we're gonna see if it's gonna run because i i got shit i gotta get done put the fuel tank in fuel tank put the fuel pump in i've got a battery stuck in it now it's uh everything's good there I'm gonna... all right yeah, I'm not tightening them cables down here. Let's see. I'm gonna prime it and check for leaks. Oh, I hear the pump. No leaks. Contact. Oh, thank God it runs. It's got a little skip in it. Okay, that's all I want to run it since I don't have the, the whole cooling system plumbed up. Burning off the oil in the uh, exhaust. Nope. But it runs. Ooh, thank God. All right. Now I can finish putting stuff together now that we know the engine runs. Guess who's back? Back again. Subaru's back, even though this is the same video and you don't even know what the heck I'm talking about, but days have passed. Actually, I think almost a week has passed. We've been doing transmissions left and right from Ford Escapes, Explorers, Motors, and Malibus. It has been 
whole bunch of mess back and forth, back and forth. So I haven't had time uh, and I was missing some parts. So the Subaru ran the other day, you heard it in the clip before this. I started it up again and I've got a little misfire. I, uh, I went and grabbed some spark plugs and some new wires. We're gonna put those in it, see if we can get the miss out of it. I also went and picked up a battery because we were having to borrow the battery from dad's Jeep to get it started moving around and we can't just keep swapping out batteries. So let's put our new battery in it and put the plugs and the wires in it, see if we can get this misfire out or it might be an injector. That intake manifold sat outside for a while from the previous owner who pulled it all apart. So it could just have a dead injector, hopefully. All right, let's, uh, let's get this thing inside over here and start putting these parts on me for not checking it. But I went to take this back plug out, which is the one we had our misfire on, and it was loose. The threads look fine. I looked down in there with the camera, they look fine, but this thing was just, I don't know, one or two turns in there just. So that's probably our misfire. I feel pretty good. Uh, my buddy Reza, if you have watched this far, I told him to cross his fingers when I started taking this thing apart uh, to make sure that it, hopefully it's not nothing crazy, you know, knock on wood. So far, we had a loose spark plug. So I got some new NGKV powers that are going in it. This is whatever was in it in Japan. So, yeah. New plugs, new wires. Let's go. Did the plugs in it. Started it up, still had our misfire. Billy over here made me nervous. He's like, you got a compression test that thing. Figure it out for sure. And I didn't want to, because I didn't want to know. And he's like, oh, it's not gonna hurt anything. You got it. You might as well. The outcome will be the same either way. So we got a compression gauge, threw it on there. She kicked up over 180 pounds. The cylinder is safe, which means the injector is dead. It is not pulsing. And yeah, I checked. It's plugged all the way in. Connection's good. It's just dead in the water. So I think I can use the injectors out of our Japanese engine and swap them over here in this intake, I think. I don't know for sure. They kind of look the same. So that's what we're gonna attempt real quick, see if that cylinder comes back around. After about an hour of Diag, swapping injectors from my Japanese intake manifold and O-rings and other injectors, we finally determined that the rail has a clog somewhere in it. I don't know why, I don't know how, um, I guess when the intake manifold sat off of the vehicle for a while, something happened, maybe dirt daubers. I really don't know. This car was apart when I bought it and I thought it was a lost cause, you know, as far as time and labor efforts. And now I, this is ridiculous. So I get, I pulled the rail, tried to, so this, this line right here that comes down it goes in it is the first injector this is where from the tank pressure comes in and it goes through that injector first and then out to the rest of them and pressurizes capping off this side of the rail where the injector goes should have let all the open pressure come out of the first hole which it should have done anyway and i got nothing completely clogged completely so something in there is stopped up i can't see it from where I'm at. I don't know what it, I don't know if it's rust. I don't know. So what's gonna happen is in the morning, I'm done for the day. I'm gonna pull the upper intake off to get the injection system out. And I'm going to attempt to clean all the lines out. And if I can't, I'm going to a pull apart. I'm gonna get a whole new set of fuel rail and injectors from a donor car and swap them into this one. And that's it. I'm not. I can't keep, this is ridiculous. So there's where my frustration lies for today. The car started up again. It, it runs good and it, it, it sounds fine other than the misfire on this back cylinder. And I got great compression. So, and I got spark. Turns out I didn't have fuel. So it was not a stuck injector. It's a clogged rail. And there's no easy way to get just this portion out because all the lines break way up underneath here. And I'm not pulling all the front drive accessories off. I, you could probably do that and reach your paws in there and get that off. Um, I'm, I'm not doing that. I'm going to pull the whole upper intake, take it all off as one big piece, and clean everything out. Tomorrow. 
Good morning, boys and girls at the internet. Pulled the intake manifold off, just the upper portion. Flipped it upside down so I could get this spaghetti nonsense off that Subaru used. And that hole right there was clogged up. Just had some gummed up, gelled up fuel in that little hole. You see that one? You see it's clean now because I just blew them all out with compressed air, brake clean, flushed and flushed and flushed until everything started looking good again. So I think maybe now it'll run on all four freaking cylinders. We'll, um, we're gonna snap this back together and see. I'm running out of patience with this car. It's all put back together. Intake's on, all the bolts and crap are on, plugs are in. Let's, uh, let's see if it's gonna leak. Oh, gotta put Betty up. Getting pretty sick of this. Okay, cycle it up. Check for injector leaks. Not on this side, finally. Looks good on that side. Okay, we're getting somewhere. It's not leaking. It's leaking. It's not skipping. Let's put a load on it. Oh, yeah. Oh, that's the stuff. Oh, I needed this win. I needed to, you don't know how, I had such a rough week. I needed that. I needed this to just work. Finally. Now let's uh, see if we can, well, we might charge the air up, I don't know. I need to go get coolant fans first. Here we are about 10 minutes later. Coolant hands actually where it's supposed to be even though we don't have a fan. So it'd probably be kicking on any minute now just to maintain that temperature. but. It's running good. Of course, we're gonna have a check engine light and stuff, mostly due to the fact that uh, the air box isn't hooked up with the mass airflow sensor and stuff like that. Uh, but yeah, so it is running. Shut it down. It sounds pretty happy. It's burning off all of my greasy paw prints and stuff all over the exhaust where I've been touching all this shit. But... Oh, me, oh my. So I need to find cooling fans now. And then we can drive it. Located cooling fans. So Flannel Man, Tim, hooked us up with a nice set of fans. And uh, under the car, I found my coolant leak. It looks like the thermostat has them, but it's not. Up above it, right there, is a tiny little split and that heater core hose. And it's a funky little pre-bent hose thing. So I got one ordered from the OOOO parts store and it should be here around 11 o'clock. So Ralph came through and they got the correct hose for us. And we got an air filter and some Freon. Dad went and picked all this up. Check out this little piece of crap right here. This is the stupid hose that I showed you earlier that is leaking. That teeny little thing. And I'm missing the little connector here for the air box and that wouldn't be too big of an issue but as you see here our mass airflow sensor goes right here and, and meters the air that goes into the engine and so we need some way to connect those for the car to drive correctly you could drive it the way it is now just your fuel economy is going to suffer performance is going to suffer and because i'm missing that and uh, i called around and there's not a junkyard that has any of that left for whatever reason. I don't know if it's a common problem. I scavenged up this piece of, I don't know if this is aluminum, this is aluminum. And what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna stick it into here and we're gonna stick it into there. And I'll bend this over and I'll put those two pieces together, kind of like that. Now, I know what you're saying. Don't worry, I've got tape. And we're gonna electrical tape the snot out of these two pieces here. And yes, it's gonna be slightly restrictive, but we're gonna be able to meter our air. And it's not in the way, 
are in danger of hitting the sensor. It's way, it's like up here. So what I want to do is I'll probably source one from another junkyard. Nothing around me has one, I called. Uh, or maybe I'll look into like some sort of cold air intake kit. I, I don't know about these Subarus. I don't know what you do with them. So if you know a website, a link, whatever, drop a comment down below. Let me know what to do for the air box or what I should do, what I shouldn't do. But this is just gonna have to work for the time being. Or if there's uh, some company out there that wants to send me a cold air intake for a 05 to 9 Subaru Outback with the 2.5 single overhead cam non-turbo, I mean, you know, I'll take one. But anyway, let's uh, get our air filter in because it didn't have one in the box and let's get our hose on, get our antifreeze in it, charge the air, and then maybe we can freaking drive it. So here we are running, we're bleeding the cooling system now. I got my conglomeration going on there. I don't know if you can tell, that compressor is just a running. So I got uh, some Freon, dad got it for me while he was at the parts store. And it holds 12 to 15 ounces on this generation Outback. And I've got one can in it, which is like 12 and some change. Check that out. It's in the 40s. 45 degrees. In the shop, it says it's about 76. Now, the ambient air on the temperature on the thermometer up there on the portacool says it's about 90 in the shop. So that's... Uh, <laughs> That is nice. That's you know 45 degrees or so, just about. If the portico could be wrong. I mean that that's that's cold air coming out of these vents. Uh, I don't know if these have a cabin air filter. I'll check that in a second. But our temperature hands looking great. The air conditioning is ice cold, and our condenser fan is running. So I mean, hey, I think I don't want to say anything. But thank you, Subaru, for cooperating, finally. Now maybe we can give it a real hand bath. And uh, that sounds wrong. We'll give it a hand wash and really see if we can clean it up. All righty, folks. Let's uh, take her on her maiden voyage. So let it run. Air and everything seems to be working just fine. Let's get that turned back on. I haven't had any warning lights come on sitting here. I did clear it out after I replaced uh, the air intake tube with my makeshift pipe. Oh, the brakes sound rusty from sitting, but that's okay. Nothing we can't fix. Here we go. Our second gear. Oh my god, we're driving. Fourth. I don't know how many gears this thing has. I don't know if it's a the four AMT, whatever it's called, or the five. I don't know. We're driving though. Look at us. Ooh, them brakes are rusty. Definitely got a shock in the back making some racket. Ta-da! Survived the test drive. It went up the road, down the highway. Didn't drive it very far or long, just kind of in a loop. Uh, got it up to 65 two or three times, let it sit there for a minute. Seems to shift out pretty good. Everything seems okay. I am now going to take my bucket and I'm gonna give this thing a hand wash. 
Uh, I think she deserves it. Maybe it'll make her feel better. Um, I don't know. Got some leaves burning off the heat shields underneath around the converters. Nothing crazy, just a little coming off of them. So good time to maybe try to spray those out too. I don't know if I use the power washer or not. I might, we'll see. But there you go. I'm feeling pretty good now. <laughs> Finally, it's mm, Subarus. Let's, let's wash it. Kind of forgot to update you guys after I washed the outside, but <laughs> we're driving it again. So I'm on the way home. Uh, we're gonna see how this thing plays out. Um, I'm already off the highway, as you can clearly tell. That part of our journey is done. But we've got a you know decent little ride home. I'm a little bit nervous. Uh, there's some like uh, oil and residue around the uh, exhaust shields where they come down off the engine. And so I've noticed those are smoking a little bit, not a lot, just a little bit uh, after the car gets warm and you come to a stop. So I have a gallon of water in the back and a fire extinguisher. I'm telling you, I, this thing just made me nervous. But I'm trusting it. We're going. Everything's going great. So let's, uh, yeah, that's, that's it. I'll let you know when we get home. Well, I made it home. No real issues other than this brake rotor is really rusty, and so it is just sanding the pads down. I had to wipe that wheel off. It was already black again, and I just washed it. But other than that, I'm letting it cool down, and then I'll check all of our fluid levels. I did stop one time on the way to, to peep my nose up underneath there and I don't know what I was looking for but I looked and uh, we're not leaking anything and yeah so I am uh, feeling pretty good about this so far it's a little down not on power or anything but uh It'll, it'll down gear to get herself moving. She's not a rocket ship by any means, but you've got a flat four moving a big station wagon around. You know, I don't really know what to expect. This is my first Subaru that, I, that I'm like, you're gonna own and keep, you know. I've, we've had plenty at the scrap yard that I drove around and stuff like that, but to like really get a feel for one, this is my first. What do you guys think? So I think we're into it now. I don't even know, I have to get a tally up and figure it out. But yeah, I still wanna find wheels and tires. So a friend of mine is getting me some specs on the offsets and what wheels will work and stuff like that. So we're gonna find us a set of probably like WRX wheels and go with something like that, something with a fine spoke. I don't know yet. This is where she's sitting. It needs suspension, whether that be coilovers from whatever company wants to send us some coilovers, ayo, uh, and then some wheels and tires, and then the headlights need to be sanded and buffed out again. That sounded like a tree just fell. Oh well. Uh, and then we've got some burnout bulbs, so it needs some LEDs up front. Do we do orange fog lights? I don't know. Do we do the JDM grill? I don't know. Do you put hella horns on it? I don't, I don't know. Do you put a Yakima rack? I'm sorry, you put a Thule rack on it? I don't know. You you tell me in the comments below, okay? I, I don't know. Just, I'm new. Just explain. With all of this being said, I'm going to end the video here. Unfortunately, we're I don't even know, but I'm sure we've got plenty of video of the car and me being irritated with different parts of the car. But this is it, we have resurrected another one. So we did a Dodge Ram uh, end of last year. We saved the little cream colored Cavalier. It's sitting right over here to the other side of me. And now we have rescued a Subaru that was destined for the junkyard. So Avalanche posted up, Subi posted up, and the little MR2 posted up and i appreciate every one of you who stayed this far into the video watching i don't know if all seven of you probably i don't know if you enjoyed what you saw here 
drop a uh, comment down below. Let me know what you think. And if you want to subscribe to the channel, I don't normally add this part, but I'm going to, if you want to subscribe to the channel, I'd greatly appreciate it and uh, share this video with Subaru people. I, that was so they can yell at me and tell me what I've done wrong. <laughs> I don't know. This, this is the first one, but there it is. What do you think? Gonna sniff my knee, that's what he thinks. You're gonna do a lot of riding in that thing because that's how Subarus work. You put your dog in them or something like that. I don't know, it's a law, look it up. Thanks for watching folks. Me and the Subaru, we're done with this video. There will be a part two for modifications now that it works. Stay tuned for that one.